I hope all of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving yesterday. Spent lots of time with family and had a lot of great food. Today we are actually, uh, we're going to Macon. It's going to be like our first day in Macon, really. Um, we were over there for a few hours checking the place out. And uh, that's when I talked about the UFO that visited Macon. But uh, we're going to be going over there for the first time and for, for the next few weeks. Uh, now when we get to Macon, we will have just a little bit of daylight. Uh, I'm not too familiar with Macon, but we'll find, we'll find some cool stuff there, surely. We have made it to Macon, Georgia as promised with just a little bit of light left and um, you know I have decided now that I want to you know there's some famous people from Macon Georgia for example uh, country music star Jason Aldean is from here in Macon little Richard is from here in Ma in Macon I, that's crazy I didn't know that Blake Clark who's in a bunch of Adam Sandler movies is from here but in particular one American rock band, like, I guess what you could say is their most notable, uh, at, well, I'm talking about the Almond Brothers. The Almond Brothers Band. They're from here in Macon, Georgia. The Almond Brothers Band officially formed in Jacksonville, Florida in 1969. Uh, the original founding members were brothers Dwayne and Greg Almond, hence the band's name. And then they brought in some of their friends, uh, Dickie Betts, who played guitar and he sung, Barry Oakley, who was on bass guitar, Butch Trucks on drums, and I guess that's Jamie Johansson on drums as well, with Dwayne playing the guitar and Greg singing. Now, their first two studio albums actually did not do that well commercially. They found no success. But then in 1971, they released a live album titled At Fillmore East. It was their first successful album and it put them on the map. To this day, even, At Fillmore East is considered to be one of the best live albums ever made. They were experiencing their first taste of success. And then right after the album's release, tragically, Duane Allman was killed in a motorcycle wreck. Right here at the corner of Bartlett Street and Hillcrest Avenue. This is the spot where Duane Allman had his motorcycle accident, right here. On October the 29th of 1971, Duane was riding his Harley Davidson motorcycle at a very high rate of speed up the road, exactly where this truck is on our left, coming that direction. He was riding his Harley Davidson up the road here. There was a flatbed boom truck that was in front of him. That flatbed boom truck slammed on brakes right here, right as they got to this intersection here. Dwayne was so close behind him and going so fast that he had to swerve very sharply to get out of the way, and it still wasn't fast enough. He swerved, and he still wound up hitting the back of the truck. He was then thrown from his motorcycle. He continued skidding up the street, and then the motorcycle actually landed on top of him and pinned him underneath it, right about right in there, right over by where that, that truck where well, the sign is there that says no trucks on this road anymore. It's about right in there. He was still alive when they took him to the hospital, but they were not able to save him. He died several hours later from massive internal injuries. Before Dwayne's passing, they had already started recording their next album, which was titled Eat a Peach. They finished that album, and in 1972, they released Eat a Peach, and they dedicated it to Dwayne. It immediately became popular and it made the Allman Brothers Band a household name. 
while they were relishing in the success of Eat a Peach, tragedy struck again. One block away from where Dwayne had his fatal motorcycle crash, exactly one year and 13 days later, bassist Barry Oakley also died from a motorcycle crash. It was almost in the same exact manner as Dwayne's. Exactly one block away, now at the corner of Napier and Inverness, Barry Oakley was actually riding his motorcycle around this curve right here. He was coming around that curve. He accidentally crossed over the yellow line and there was a bus, a city bus that was coming the road this way. He crossed over the yellow line and struck that bus head on. Barry Oakley was thrown from his bike, slid across the pavement right over here, off to the side of the road. But Barry Oakley, he then de he declined medical treatment. He didn't want anyone to help him. He stood up, he picked his bike up and pushed it off the side of the road over here. He uh, caught a ride home from a passerby them take him home. So about three hours after he got home, his family rushed him to the hospital. He was delirious, incoherent, and he was in agony. He was in so much pain. And it wasn't long after they took him to the hospital that he passed away. He died of cerebral swelling. The doctor said even if he had gone straight to the hospital from the scene of the accident here that they would not have been able to save him so he actually went home and got to spend his last you know few minutes with his family instead of doing it in a hospital bed the band was devastated after mourning the tragic death of their brother and friend Dwayne and uh, Barry Greg Allman recruited Chuck Level and Lamar Williams to fill in those two spots. And less than a year later, they released their fifth album, Brothers and Sisters, which included their hit single, Ramblin' Man, which would go on to become the band's most popular song and their most played song on the radio. Well, in 1995, the Allman Brothers Band would go on to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Thank you, folks. In honor of the greatest friend, brother, guitar player, and inspiration I've ever known, my brother Dwayne, he was my greatest motivation. Thank you. They officially retired for good in 2014, after nearly 45 years in the rock music scene. In January of 2017, the drummer, Butch Trucks, he, he was a founding member of the Allman Brothers Band. He was broke. He was in financial turmoil. The stress of all of that financial turmoil uh, caused him to take his own life by a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Four months later, after years of health complications in May of 2017, Greg Allman succumbed to liver cancer at his home in Savannah, Georgia. So now I have driven across town. We are now at Rose Hill Cemetery here in Macon. Now this entrance to the cemetery is really awesome here. It's got like that old Spanish style thing to it. It's really cool. One of the rumors that surround uh, the Allman Brothers is that they used to come here to this cemetery to practice their songs and stuff. 
and that they would actually get the names of some of their songs from graves that you know where that they would see as they were out here practicing and today I can confirm this rumor or at least what I think would confirm the rumor the fact that uh, I don't know if you have ever heard of the Almond Brothers band song Elizabeth Reed well guess what's right here beside me and right here we have the grave of Elizabeth Reed sitting all the way back here at the back of the cemetery this elaborate spot here with the stairs this is the final resting place of four members of the Allman Brothers band you filming? yeah would you like to go in Oh, that'd be awesome. Just watch out. It's kind of probably slippery in there. Oh, that's okay. Alright. As you can tell, all four, four of the original members are all buried right here in the same spot. Dwayne Allman, Raymond Barry Oakley, who was bass guitar, Greg Allman, and Butch Trucks. So it's a beautiful spot here. Macon, Georgia has made sure that the legend of the Almond Brothers stays alive. They added like all of the notable locations surrounding the Almond Brothers to their uh, historic places register. And they even opened the Almond Brothers Museum here at the big house. Well, we're gonna check out the museum and then uh, we're actually going to go try to track down a few other places from the Allman Brothers history here in Macon. There's a big blown up picture of them there. Now, um, not all of the members of the band are from Macon. Greg and Dwayne, the founders, are from Macon. And there was a few others that joined the band along the way that uh, were from here in Macon. At any rate, uh, we're here at their house now, which has uh, now been turned into the Allman Brothers Band Museum. This property is called the Big House. Home to the Allman Brothers Band, families, roadies, and friends between 1970 and 1973. A lot of their uh, concert stuff. Fillmore East. Now this is some of the Allman Brothers actual equipment. All of it, everything in here belonged to the Allman Brothers. How cool is that? Dwayne's Wild Ride. Grand Kingdom National Park entrance. That's awesome. Yeah, that was a big signature there. Wow. This is awesome. There's more of their, some more of their touring stuff. Oh, look at that belt. It's heartbreakers up there on the top of it. Oh, that's 
Butcher's drum set there. Yeah. When, uh, when Dwayne Allman had his motorcycle wreck and passed away, he actually was living in an apartment in a room here on this property. It's 1125 Bond Street here in Macon. And Dwayne, Donna, and Galadriel lived upstairs in this building. Formerly right here at one time there was a house which was the Allman Brothers Hippie Crash Pad. Now the, the house is no longer here, but it's set on this property. They had roadies and all. And then uh, this building right here next to it is also synonymous with the Allman Brothers. They actually uh, made the, the first album, the first Allman Brothers band album was taken right here in front of this building. In fact, it was uh, taken from, I don't know, about right here at this angle. You can see uh, the guy standing all the way on the right has his hand on that pillar right here to the right. You can see the window frame here behind him and these windows down that way. But you can also tell that it's a solid wall right here where they're standing. And you know, I mean, some of the, like this stuff that they have allowed to grow here, you know, that stuff was around then too. The pillars looked a little more dingier, but who knows, they may have made it that way for that picture, but this is it. This is the the exact location where they took the the Almond Brothers' first album cover, right here. What a, a great! I mean, this was a great first day here in Macon, getting to see all of this, uh, all all this history from the Almond Brothers band. If you like rock and roll, hopefully you enjoyed this video on some of the most uh, historic locations from the Almond Brothers band. Hopefully uh, it interested you to see that, including their final resting places. However, that is going to do it for this episode today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Then turn around, hit that notification bell so you get notified when I upload a video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you again tomorrow. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Much love to you all.